Pourquoi j'ai une image d'un tank sur le toit d'une maison PDF 4.1 Shadow of Despair is a beat'em all shooter about giant insects, cheesy voice lines, and the fact that there is nothing the grindbuster can't penetrate. It's straightforward third-person shooter, the kind so bad it's good, where you fight off an alien invasion as well as kaiju's giant robots in order to defend your mother Earth. You do so by using different sets of weapons and classes, each with their own type of gameplay. Welcome Ranger to Maggot Boys Reviews, where we'll cover the game's development, lore and mechanics. So get ready to deploy, check your minimap and spam left control, because where we are going, 30 missions is just 1% completion. Earth Defense Force 4.1 is nor the most recent nor the oldest in the series, but definitely the less expensive on Steam. Originally a PlayStation 3 game ported to PC, EDF 4 is part of the Earth Defense Force series, or as it's originally called, Chikyu Boegyun, a low-budget series whose origin are as the kind of game you would get in a dollar store for 2000 yen. Developed by Sandlot and published by D3 Publisher in 2013, it's a third-person shooter with both a single and multiplayer functions. The mind behind the game's soundtrack is of course Masafumi Takeda, uh, the genius behind the God Hand game and Danganronpa anime's soundtracks. As you've probably noticed by now, the game, just like the entire series, has an overly Japanese feel. Indeed, EDF takes a lot from the kaiju genre, you know, giant stuff like oversized moth and three-headed 60s muppets, and there's also a lot of inspiration from stuff like Super Sentai, 80s mechas, and a lot of classic television pop culture. You can find this in the design of the characters, the enemies, the voice lines, and the absurdity of the entire plot. It feels like a B-movie, and in the good way. Every line is delivered with absolute certainty, and the entire logic of this anime-style universe is self-contained. The lore of EDF, well, it's not its selling point. I mean, there's a story, but it's very cliché and it's not that important, to the point that it's mostly covered in the PS4's version's manual, like in an old-school game. The rest of the story is pretty well integrated into the rhythm of the game. There are no cutscenes or prolonged explanation of things, the whole of it is delivered through radio communications, news outlets, and the NPCs you pass by. The way it is done is quite immersive and helps plunge you into the absolute mess that is Earth Defense Force. But now, let's talk about the story because it does exist. In 2013, scientists discover a strange signal from deep space, basically saying, Sub boys, ready or not, here we come. In 2015, after years of not getting any answers from sliding into the aliens' DMs, the decision was made to prepare a big fuck you force just in case. In 2017, the aliens arrived, called the Ravagers or the Foreigners, depending if you're in the English or the Japanese dub. They attacked using giant ants and spaceships. After getting slapped, they returned on once more in 2025, where you find out the previous incursions was just a scouting force. And now these guys are the real deal. They even build a wall. Now, this is where the storyline gets blurry. Indeed, the EDF games tend to just split off into different timelines, with Iron Rain and EDF 5 restarting from scratch and 4.1 being on its own side. And yeah, it's chaotic as hell, it's amazing, the basics is that the aliens are back and they bring more big guns and big robots now that shoot artillery and that is annoying to all hell. There are four classes, each with their own weapons, and they are all quite unique and quite fun, except for the missile launcher and the rangers. The missile launcher is shit. Wrong. Those classes are the rangers, air raiders, wing divers, and fencers. The ranger is the foot soldier, coming in to do anything and everything, and it's my favorite. 
You can roll to dodge and use grenades as unique abilities. Air Raiders are the logistics with the big machines. They get to spawn stuff like armored cars and mechas and tanks and stuff. They can call in artillery and bombardments on the map. Think of them more of special force when armed or more as logistics when they realize they forgot to take anything with them. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Wing divers are the full female air support. They have a generator mechanic where they generate energy that can be used to fly and reload their guns. This is consumed faster than it can regenerate, so you're going to have to do some pit stops. This is compensated by how overly powerful flying is and how their weapons are. The lands and the rapiers are strong as hell and are the best in the spaces like tunnels. 10 out of 10. Fills the EDF rule 34 page. At last, we got fences. The paladins of EDF. They are equipped with two sets of weapons and are basically small mechas. Both strong and slow as shit. They are quite a good class. But the weapons of the fencer range from ban hammers to automatic artillery. This is not a joke. Fighting can be simplified to just shoot them till they die. There aren't any stun mechanics or anything fancy like that. Just damage output and some broken physics that can be used to your advantage or end up with a hexer's artillery iron going through the building you were just hiding behind just to end you instantly. Enemies you encounter can be quite diverse, but the main ones are at first ants, spiders and them drone things and oh no not them again. Um, but they aren't the limiting theme for what you will encounter. There's a uh, Yen Star Godzilla just in case we didn't use up all of the uh, TV tropes page. Run! It's Godzilla! It looks like Godzilla, but due to international copyright laws, it's vagina. Still, we should run like it is Godzilla! Though it isn't. EDF 4.1 is a classic, there's no doubt about it, it's a stupidly good game. You can feel it in its janky physics and the serious delivery of absurd anime-like lines that a lot of love, hilarious laughter and delirium has gone into the making of that masterpiece. The balance of absurd taking itself just seriously enough and the almost relaxing mechanics make this an enjoyable experience after a tough day of work. The multiplayer is flawless and despite some FPS losses on the menu, the PC port is perfect. We give this game the amount of times we had to redo the 23rd mission on the usefulness of a narrator who forgot his artillery doesn't work on indoor missions. Hey, hey. Highly recommended, both the game and the franchise as a whole, if you can afford the steeper pricing of the latest entries. We also recommend playing with a friend or two at the uh, multiplayer not only offers a few more missions only available on it, but also a much more absurd and enjoyable experience of seeing your friends getting chased around by a horde or getting rescued by a tank only to see the Hector kick it away. 10 out of 10 would get stomped again. If you like this video and want more content, like and subscribe. To save our Mother Earth from any alien attack From vicious giant insects who have once again come back We'll unleash all our forces, we won't cut them any slack The EDFD boys Hello. Our soldiers Hello. are prepared for any alien threats ah. The Navy launches ships and the Air Force ah. sends their jets And nothing can withstand the bayonets The EDFD